Thank you. Hello. I repeat, I am Evgeny Poteka. Now I work uh, as machine learning analyst in Russian bank RALSIP. Uh, I work here now for half year. But uh, just three years ago, I was very far from data science. I have very small information about it. And uh, I show my story, how I reached my success in Kaggle, and uh, try to explain some ideas how to people with business business-related background could be success, uh, successful machine learning. I try to be short about myself. Main part of my presentation will cover Kaggle benefits and my ideas how to succeed, succeed in Kaggle. I plan to show some examples from past competitions about validation and feature engineering to prove my ideas about benefits of using business-related skills with machine, le with machine learning. Now, uh, I, as uh, it was well said, I am an economist. Now I am 45, and most part, part of my life, I was I worked as a business consultant. My work was to create or standardize budget, uh, methodology of budgeting, reporting before automation. I worked with IT company, but my responsibility was the business side. Uh, when I was a consultant, I was not deep uh, in programming, but uh, I have very Big advantages, I could speak both by business and IT languages. I'm good link between others, and it was my job. I was successful enough. My solution, which uh, prepared with my participation, worked in a few top Russian company. And... Uh, one thing what I knew about IT, I knew how IT solution could be useful for business. I think for that IT is a very useful tools for business, and I know how to use IT tools to improve business. And three years ago, I started to think about my career for some reason. I it was strange mathematic that I realized that I already worked 20 years, but I could work 25 years more <laughs> because now life is very long. And I think that I have a lot of time to study new career and uh, repeat my previous success in consulting. I started, uh, at that moment, I discovered Coursera for myself. I started from the business, some business analytics courses. It was amazing. I <laughs> found m m a lot of useful information. I like this new type of education, on online education. And these courses helped me to uh, understand the, uh, the future role of data science for business. Especially when I took some marketing courses, and then they describe it about um, customer level analytics, and uh, I think that I could be, it could be interesting for me, and I start to study some machine learning courses. During the year, I, um, at this period, I worked as, as a freelancer, and I have periodically have a lot of time for study, and uh, I, during the year, I finished it near 30 courses. I, of course, it, it was classical course of, by Andrew NG, but also a lot of other courses, including a few statistical, statistics, analytics, data exploration, and so on. I, I decided to study hard. I take, took a lot of courses.
And uh, two years ago, I became uh, a Kegler. My first competition was Santander Customer Satisfaction. Uh, uh, in this competition, I managed uh, to de-anonymize uh, the initial features, and it helped me to make good feature engineering. And uh, at one moment, I discovered my, myself at the top 50 at the public leaderboard. It was, <laughs> I was very happy. I didn't expect so much growth, but uh, at that moment, I learned a good lesson about our fitting. At that moment, my local validation isn't was very good, and uh, I make some mistakes, as I know <laughs> now. And uh, at the private leaderboard, I dropped more than 500 places. I was upset, but maybe a little bit less upset than top three teams who dropped at more than 3,000 places. <laughs> it was a competition with very huge shake-up because uh, this have a lot of possibility to our fitting. And uh, I think that it happened for me in the first competition uh, because I have ability to study this way. I, in one side, I feel that I could, uh, could reach the top. It's, it's achievable, but uh, another side, I understand that I need to study much more to work much more in this direction. Next to competition, I finished in the top 50. I, I participated time to time when I have available. Uh, after each competition, I uh, had study all solution from top teams. I tried to understand what uh, would be useful what I did wrong, what I do, do, did right. And I feel that my uh, experience in machine learning increase, especially my ability to create local validation schemes. And uh, in uh, December of 1916, I won our first, my, goal, my first gold medal. It was Santander product recommendation. Uh, for this competition, I found many unusual ideas uh, rather than different participants. My model may be not perfect at that moment, but uh, my ideas helped me to uh, won a gold and uh, reach seventh place. And um, after a few another competition in uh, uh, after one year all the my Kegel experience in the J June of 2017 I won the competition Osbirbank this uh, in this competition we worked together in team together with Agnes from Latvia our model was very different it was a good combination between different approaches, and um, our um, combined model performed very well. Uh, also, one of our advantages was we both use good local validation, and uh, we lose on the private part much less than the former leader. We, at public, we finished second, but uh, the private, we was first uh, long with big advantages of other teams. I later described some ideas ab about this competition. Uh, this, this win helped me to reach the 50, 50, uh, top 50 in global Kegel rankings. And uh, after that, I started, started to receive some job proposals. I know that I need um, much more, uh, much, much more study, much more practice, and I choose uh, the bank. Uh, then I think that I could study much more. And uh, last autumn, I start to work as a machine learning analyst, 
my responsibility to create models to assess uh, retail risk. Uh, I think it's a little bit similar that the new competition was yesterday was introduced from bank home credit. Now, though this half year I created few models, some of this was boosting models, some of this was classical logistic regression, and most of this, my model performed better than uh, previous models. And of course, uh, after half year of working experience, I understand the difference between competitions and real life. It exists, but not too much, I think. And, uh, for this reason, I think the Kaggle competition is very useful. Despite my work, uh, I st tried to find some times for the competitions, and the, during last half year, I won also two, uh, two more gold medals. And I, the last one was at Token Data two weeks ago, and I, uh, I think that I could manage to be a great master this year. And uh, I want to, to talk a little bit about Kaggle benefits. I think uh, everybody know about Kaggle advantages, but I want to underline some mo most important for me. Of course, for me, at a, this is a place for study. It's best for place for practical study of machine learning. A lot of people are ready to share their ideas to help you if you have some troubles. After competition, you could study most effective solutions. And you know every, everywhere about new technologies, new original ideas that could enhance your background very fast. It's my, I think it's much faster than in the, when, they, when you study just theory. And uh, one more thing, as a, Kaggle is the most popular place for competition, you sh even you are very good in machine learning, you should expect uh, the easy ride. Uh, to be successful, you should work hard every time to, to spend a lot of money. It's a very rare chance that you could win with only one light solution, maybe. I think it's every person need to work, and it's good. And for this reason, many employers consider Kaggle success as a good test of machine learning skills. And I think for everybody who want to enhance your chance to find a good job, it's a good idea to invest your time to the Kaggle. A competition. It's achievable and you, my own experience can prove this idea. I bet on the Kaggle and work after one year hard work, I achieve what I want. And I repeat, the Kaggle is a place, uh, is a good place for practice. Uh, because uh, none of, of particular work have ability to practice it and try some different cases. It's a very big range of cases from different industries, different types, and you can study it, you can try it, and uh, it's significantly enhance your background in this place. And now I want to share my ideas how to achieve good results, even you are not excellent te te technicians, but you want to achieve your results. For me, the most important part is understand the task and to find the drivers which could affect the target. Sometimes you could use your professional background, sometimes you, it could be your customer experience, and of course you could read some information, but I encourage you don't uh, rely on numbers only. I show how uh, this ap approach could work. Next, very important thing, is local validation. 
our fitting is the main enemy of any competition. I suggest use you the cross validation every time it's then it's possible. And then in time series, cross validation is achievable. Daniel showed some example, and I try to uh, express how it's possible to use cross validation in this case too. It, uh, cross validation is essential for Kaggle, especially when you try to improve your result within the fourth decimal place. <laughs> it's you uh, unit model and local validation with very high precision. It's not very easy, especially if you don't want to uh, our city. Sometimes it's not not easy. Uh, random split is not the uh, answer for all, all tasks. I show some example. And of, of course, you should uh, study machine learning tools. For me now, I I use gradient boosting preferred, and like IBM is the best one now. Uh, and uh, at, le at least you should know the main principles of the main useful tools. It would, would be helpful to choose the right to tools for certain task. For me, now after I mm, know a, a lot of gradient boosting, I have big, my next big goal is to study neural nets, special recurrent neural nets and the embedding, which now are very popular for also the, all the feature encoding, and I think I should use it too. And uh, I think it's very valuable to know uh, the most uh, important hyperparameters of tools that you use and the role of each hyperparameters. Sometimes in the public kernels, I saw a very strange set of parameters. <laughs> I don't know how people think that it could work good. Uh, it's maybe a good sign about our fitting, first of all, I think. And uh, next, the, the very popular mistake among the Keglers. Uh, don't spend much time to hyperparameters. Of course, you need a good uh, parameters, but don't do it every day. It's uh, very common, I know. <laughs> I suggest you to find stable set of parameters after you prepare the, your first draft of model. It's not, usually it's not too, um, too long to find um, a stable set which would be good enough. And you could return to the tune parameters after, before the end of competition, but don't do it during the uh, other time, because you should spend this time to the test new ideas, test new features, new libraries, and so on, because the, uh, the potential of new ideas much more better, much more higher than just when you improve your a score from the tuning parameter for the good set through the best set. Uh, potential is much less in this case, and you spend, should spend time proper way. One more thing is hard work. If you bet on Kaggle to improve your CV, you should consi consider it as a one more job, really. <laughs> if you don't spend much time for this, you didn't expect the good reward. I spent a lot of time last year and I rewarded it. I think it's a very valuable investment of my time. And one more thing, if then you start to make good models and start to think about some uh, win uh, that uh, you need uh, a team then if you want to be uh, on top because level of competition is very high uh, and uh, 
synergy of different people with different ideas usually works very good. As now we we know about that stacking could improve your result but some way, but if you <laughs> combine models based on different approaches, the improve would be much better. And uh, two weeks ago, we won, uh, we won a gold me medal at Token Data. Our team, we reach eighth place. But I think mm, that mm, for this time, what we, we may, may do with this competition, none of us, our team, could reach alone the gold medal in this competition. Sometimes it's very useful and thanks Kegel that they have this ability. And now some practical examples to prove my words. Sometimes competition could be very complex than it looks like at first. I uh, told you about the Rman competition. The main task of this competition was to predict house prices for a period of six months. We have um, train period our four years. At this period, Moscow house market grew significantly. But at one time, it started to descend because of crisis. And uh, it was not a good idea to use together prices from 2011 and 2015 as this. As we know, gradient boosting could not find the trend. It just could combine similar objects and together I can collect the average price, average price of some average probability. And uh, I think we should help boosting in this situation. My idea was to, that we should separate tasks for two types of drivers. One type of drivers who uh, related to the target is individual characteristic of apartments. It's location, size of apartment, number of rooms, and so on. And different type, uh, a second type, it was market market tra trend. It was depend on inflation and different uh, macro parameters. Uh, I use my model, base model, which I use there, and manage to uh, to calculate the market trend for train period. You could see it on the chart. It's growth is significant, and I decided to exclude this component from the, my model, and I scale all prices, prices for all period, to one level. And after that, my model became much more good uh, according to the characteristic of apartments. It was a good idea which helped us to win. And one more, is, is, bank is was very complicated cases, and one more things, that we have apartments of two different types. It was new apartments in new building from developers and apartment from second market. And this uh, type of apartments have different price drivers too, because uh, new apartments uh, sometimes uh, could be sale before then the building com being uh, completed. And sometimes new apartment could be without any wall. I know it because I, a few years ago, also bought the same apartment in this condition. <laughs> and the, the, this, this condition could be affect uh, a lot of discount, of course. And uh, uh, for this reason, it was better to build two different models, one for new buildings and one for second market. It also not uh, easy from the just data, but if you uh, understand what the real case is, how it looks like on the market, it's a very obvious idea. Yeah. 
Another reason to the dive into the case is the feature selection and feature engineering. As you know, correlation does not imply causation. And if you have ideas about relation between features and target, you could avoid false decision. Another example from the <laughs> Sberbank. In the data set was uh, many uh, apartments with very low prices. The nature of these prices was uh, the people try to avoid taxes. In Russian, have some, uh, you could decrease your tax value and for, for apartment which you own more than five years, you decrease for full, whole price, but if you own the apartment less than five years, you could de decrease for one million rubles, for example. And uh, many people try to, to save your money from the taxes and uh, put in the contract the low level. It's, it's not real price, but it's <laughs> at, at the time it was usual. We dis discuss in the forum a few times about that it's impossible to predict the low, low prices because they, they drive it by only by features as of the how long the owner own the apartment, but we haven't any features. And if we, according to the features that we have, these uh, low prices, uh, you should consider as, uh, just as a noise, not more. But uh, many people don't agree with me, didn't agree with me, they told that this is data which uh, we, we should predict it. Uh, it was not a good idea because uh, even they uh, find some correlation, some uh, improvement from this data on the public, they lose a lot on the private because it's unreal. And the best way was just to remove this data from the training and remove the noise, noise level. It helps very good. And one, and also, if you understand the task, it's easy to create new features. Yeah. Sometimes you, people use the different automation, automotive combination of features, but it's, uh, if you have a lot of features, it's not every time achievable. And uh, I sh show example that it's uh, this formula which is on the slide, I think is uh, very rare achie achievable by autom automatic combination. But uh, it have very certain idea. It's this uh, estimate how long each loan was already paid. Just it's, I, it feature was useful for the task to determine default probability of loans at Indian Hakeris Machine Learning Challenge, which I won. And uh, I think uh, it's th this kind of feature present in every, in every competition and uh, you sh could uh, create similar feature if you don't rely only on some automatic algorithm and try to create something based on your understanding the task. My idea is that knowledge of technologies is very important, but together with uh, analytics, your result could be much more effective. And uh, now let's talk about local validation. It's, uh, for me, I think it's a good local validation essential. If you build your own validation, you <laughs> could forget for, for, forget for the time about submission to the server. <laughs> because you could, you just need to time to time to check whether your validation is still good. Uh, the, uh, for me, the validation, uh, we, sometimes the, I, I recommend you to use cross-validation and uh, sometimes 
a random split is not uh, good enough. Uh, if you see the train test split or public-private split uh, are not based on random, on random distribution, you should try to copy these uh, principles of how it was done. Sometimes this period has some anomaly. It was uh, like in Santander 2 competition, recruit competition with Golden Week. It's one of the good strate strategy try to use similar an anomaly in the train for validation. Sometimes data have some leaks, maybe not leaks uh, to the target and it could Maybe it's not help you to to the test data, but it could be inter eternal train leaks, and it's better to avoid to consider it in val validation. Uh, one of the re way you could use this feature to the, to the split the data, to split it. it's one of the examples. It could be clients you could separate data by the clients and all data for one client would be in one fold and you avoid some leaks uh, information about clients in, like purchasing history or so on. And uh, one more hint for me for about feature selection. It's very useful for me every time. Then you do, do it cross-validation at, che at check features or parameters. Uh, choose features which improve not only your average CV score, but score uh, but improve the score of the most of the fault. Uh, this approach could prevent you to the choosing features which improve only one or two faults with high level because it could be unstable sometimes and uh, this effect could not be at the test. And some examples of local validation. First, I remember about, repeat about Sberbank. In this competition, after that, I scaled the prices uh, and the whole period became on the one price level according to the macro trend. It was achievable to use uh, simple cross validation and the variation between false was very low. It was very good to choose the, to select the feature. Another example, the Hearthstone competition, which was hosted last year here in Poland. The Hearthstone is a card, computer card game. The goal of this competition was to predict who would won the game using snapshot from the middle of the game. The organizers collect many snapshots for every game, and it led to, to some leaks for gradient boosting. It <laughs> was unintended leaks, but uh, gradient boosting shows some relation, and after you train it a few thousand iterations, it still improve validation. And, uh, this was the reason why most of the participants didn't use boosting in this competition. I found another solution. I split the data by pairs of the game heroes. It was nine type of heroes uh, and uh, 81 pairs of the possible pairs of these heroes. I split uh, this equally to the nine folds such way that the one combination was in one fold and this leads that if uh, some leaks between different, uh, different stage of one game, it was in one fault and it not leak to another fault. And the, between the fault, I could test the, only the real dependencies, real relations. And this similar case, Instacart, it was uh, competition with time series, the goal was to predict next shopping, shopping basket for each customer. We have a long time series for one year. 
but instead of traditional for time series called out, uh, it's possible to use cross-validation. This competition, very good idea was to split data by customers. And all purchasing history of one customer put, should put in one fold, and uh, all possible leaks was located in one fold. Uh, this similar idea could be for the another time series. Today was discussed at recruit competition. Uh, different approach for validation could be if you uh, split the data by restaurants and put all information about one restaurant to one fold, not be between different. And this, uh, this approach could help you to use cro uh, real cross-validation, that which could be much more available than uh, held out. And uh, for finish, a little bit motivation. <laughs> I, first of all, did it prove it for myself that I could become a data scientist in my age. Uh, and previous uh, experience and business-oriented thinking could be useful for the machine learning, especially if you study technology. You try to use. Now I try to encourage my friends <laughs> to go with me. I think that new digital economy is much more specialist. And uh, we have a, the fine, uh, fine places like Coursera, Kegel. It has a good place for start. Uh, this station, I don't fear high c competition between more people because more people from business, business side, means more money for all, all of us. It maybe looks strange, but if they deep in the machine learning, it will significantly speed, speed up expansion of new technologies to traditional business. Now only the online business, first of all, use machine learning, but traditional industries, not too much. And uh, we need a lot of people for, from business which should know about benefits of machine learning. And this increased demand for data scientists, and we <laughs> have a lot of job. That's all. <laughs> Thank you. So now the question times. Does anyone have the I didn't expect it. Oh, th thank you for your talk. Uh, do, do you plan to continue to take part in Kaggle competitions in the coming years after you have achieved your goal? Yeah, I think I, I like it. Uh, it's for me, it's not just the work. It's, I, it's a very good hobby because I think that the, dif uh, the my results and good results, the difference between it is only my Unknowledge something, I my bet, and I want to improve it. Uh, this competition, uh, competitive atmosphere, very interesting for me. And I, when I have a time, I try to do it. <laughs> Thank you. Nice throw. Uh, I have a question because you said that uh, Kaggle competitions are similar to. A real work. In my opinion, it's like uh, it's not true to some extent because I find it very hard to motivate as much uh, for the real work as for the competitions. <laughs> because oh. um, uh, competitions are so addictive, and how you motivate uh, yourself uh, to such an extent that you can compare, you know, uh, uh, these two uh, Kaggle. Uh, at the Kaggle, how motivate? How, how do you motivate in your real work? Ah, in real work? <laughs> uh, yeah, I okay, guess so it's uh, not uh, easy because I, now I uh, in study, then I want to, uh, want to need to hard work. I w was on the start position maybe, and uh, I need to, and I, I choose it because I need to more practice. Because I, in the future I plan to be a consultant, I 
prefer to do something by by my hands before to start to teach other people and uh, consult other people how to improve it and i did it before and i start and this is my motivation now that i even i have some routine i want to 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 do it because uh, i should to do it because i have to know all details maybe it's some of this is not interesting of course i in constant uh, war in my uh, chiefs <laughs> about it i try to improve new ideas new technologies i want to uh, show them that how new technologies better how new ways but uh, i maybe by my consultant nature i in every situation try to see the how to improve it and i try to show by myself to my employers what, what if i do something it could be better for that and uh, this um, reason would be to for change maybe now that i just uh, my work started the very my, and my work uh, bank uh, very routine process all the calibration uh, each model you have model but sometimes time to time you need to calibrate the probability to the level of current situation and it's usually very hard procedure it's maybe takes for experience specialist one week <laughs> i don't like this routine i coded it by myself and now it worked for a few minutes and, um, and my employers now will say wow it's easy but we before spent a lot of days for this every day but nobody decided to change things uh, so my question is related to what you just said um, so what are the biggest challenges when you try to explain data science projects to uh, non-technical staff? And how do you overcome this problem? Like how do you, how you convince people of projects that you believe in? Uh, it's uh, very, <laughs> not easy question. I, I think in, in our, our in Russian in bank, banking system, it's was one of the problem is that our regulator um, uh, demand that the all models which used for scoring should be interpret interpretable and uh, uh, <laughs> all all banks society know that the machine uh, gradient boosting much better but they don't uh, want to start the war against the regulator direct they shall uh, we use some hidden ways to show to use boosting but not and uh, for me, I think uh, the best uh, thing to the explain this is the money. You show, you build one model, classical model, you build new model, you should compare economical effect. Of course, it's not, be, not easy, but I think it's, uh, uh, it's require, required. But if you show that your boss that you earn much more money with this new model, I think it's much easier to explain that it's good. But and the one more thing, it's uh, good validation. You should explain the principles of validation. There's some how you measure it, how the main principles. Maybe you make model, and after that you say, okay, let's try, we don't, didn't use it, but we should measure the results every next month and try to compare diff uh, current model and new model. What the difference, and uh, after that, is try to switch it to the money. I think it's only the way to the token with business. Thank you again for your presentation.